Boxing Day marks the halfway stage of the Premier League season and that makes this a great time to assess the claims of the contenders for the title, for European football and also survival. And at the table top, it's all pointing to a truly heavyweight tussle for the big prize. Well, hey everyone, if you were celebrating Christmas yesterday, I hope you had a fantastic time. Now, match day 19 in the Premier League season is just minutes away, actually, with the Boxing Day program getting underway at Craven Cottage. So, as I said, let's do some halfway stage forecasting today as we firstly lick our lips in anticipation of an epic title race, which right now looks like a heavyweight showdown between these three prolific strikers. We'll also debate the capital clash for Champions League football, although maybe the Solskjaer bounce will bring United back into contention. And when it comes to relegation, it's beginning to look as if the teams that don't fix their defences will be the first in line for the drop. And just the one guest for me today, but not just any guest, I've got to say, because joining us from the UK is the Mirror Football writer, Darren Lewis. Looking sharp, sir, I must say. Belated Merry Christmas to you. And you know what, Darren, do you agree with me that we all got the best present possible recently, which is a genuine heavyweight title race that promises so much in the second half of the season? Absolutely, John. Lots of people getting carried away at the start of the season, believing it was cities to run away with. But mm. City at the limit showing that defensive stability and Spurs, they just will not go away under Mauricio Pochettino. If he was to leave at the end of this season, John, what a present it could be mm. if he were to go first to a shock type of win. Well, we'll come to them in just a moment, but what we need to do before we do anything else is get into this business about prize fighters. I can't take all the credit for that headline. I have to credit the uh, Guardian newspaper with that. As they went with prize fighters, why this could be a battle for the ages. And you can understand why, because there is so much to look forward to. Because this is, as I said, a title race that just changed in its dimensions over the last couple of the weeks. Firstly, with this little bit of vulnerability creeping in for City, which meant that suddenly we look at Liverpool as being more than just a good team that might have been the best ever second place finishes uh, and, and also because of Spurs they won't go away and they've demonstrated that they're very much in this one so I asked you a little bit earlier on on social media to, to tell me what you think about this who's going to finish where I asked you to go for not just the top three but the top six and we'll come to the race for Europe later this is Francis Chin who's gone Liverpool to win the title ahead of City Chelsea in third United Arsenal Spurs he sees a big slip away there for Spurs which I find slightly surprising moving on to another one this one came in from uh, Pravin if Liverpool gets a gap of seven after the game against City on the third then it's Liverpool to win the title so you've gone with Liverpool City Spurs third Arsenal Chelsea and Manchester United in sixth place there we'll come to relegation later uh, let's carry on with a couple more here. Nick went for Liverpool as well. The amount of people going for Liverpool for the title. City, Spurs, Arsenal, Chelsea uh, and then Manchester United. Jerome also for Liverpool, then Spurs. Man Spurs second, City third. Wow. Chelsea, Arsenal and Everton. OK, well that, as I said, is something that has changed around absolutely massively. So we come to this and it is the halfway stage, the 19th round of games. What I like about Boxing Day's programme is this. After our early kickoff, Fulham Wolves, We've got the three at the top, all playing at the same time. That really doesn't happen very often at all. Um, City at Leicester, we've got Liverpool at home to Newcastle, and we've got Spurs at home to Bournemouth. And that is something for all of us to look forward to. In terms of the tabletop, well, this is the equation as we know. It's a four-point lead for Liverpool right now. A further two points then to Spurs. And let's not forget that as far as the fixtures are concerned, everything is building now towards that clash there on the 3rd in the UK, 3rd of January, uh, between Liverpool and Manchester City. Let's start off by talking about Liverpool right now before I get Darren's take on them. As far as Jurgen Klopp and company are concerned, they had such a bonus over the last two weeks with those two City defeats in three games. Liverpool's last performance, an impressive one against Wolves. And what are the headlines saying now? How are they handling this situation? Well, this is the whole point. Uh, the Mail in the UK today went for this. They asked their uh, experts about this. They said the copper on top, but can they handle the title tug of war? Uh, and by and large, I think like you guys, most people are saying, yeah, they, they probably can. The reason being, the smile is back on Salah's face again. And Klopp is basically saying we're relaxed. Now, 
I happen to think that they have every right to be relaxed because they, in my opinion, will put away the weaker teams if they carry on attacking the way that Salah and company do. And then it will come to the big games. Let's have a look at their big games against big six sides because that's where I think Liverpool's newfound defensive strength is going to be the key for them. Um, Arsenal next in a tricky run of games for them. Then that Manchester City game away. I think that the two Manchester clubs could hold the key for Liverpool. They pay both City and United away from home and they will be very much leaning on their defensive strength. They take on uh, former manager Rafa Benitez and Newcastle United, but they're a hapless looking side at the moment. He says we won't be your turkeys, but quite frankly, you'd have to say you'd expect Liverpool to be too good for them in attack and probably good enough to keep them out defensively. Darren, uh, those are a lot of opinions of mine. I don't know if you share my belief, but I just got this sense with Liverpool that there's enough about them if they keep their heads to be able to do this. Absolutely, John. Only seven goals conceded so far this season. Virgil van Dijk, the signing of this, and probably many a season, uh, this is because he's been absolutely sensational for them with his leadership, his defensive now he's a Rolls Royce of a defender, and he gives the platform to the offensive players to go and do their business, as Salah has been doing so far, so very well indeed. Uh, and you have know, the right man for this kind of occasion, you know, he's we all know what he did in the German league with Borussia Dortmund. So he has that experience to be able to guide Liverpool through those shopping waters. And they've been helped by what City haven't done uh, because they failed in, in the last couple of games. And, you know, they go to a Leicester side fresh from seeing off Chelsea inflicting their third defeat in their last six Premier League games. So it's all set up. Mm. If Liverpool can see through. And with the balance in that side, they haven't really done it spectacularly. People have been deriding them that for that job, but they've kept on winning, and that's where they are. Where they are. Yeah. See, the other factor here is is what City do, because we kept saying to ourselves, yeah, Liverpool might be great, but City just aren't going to go wrong. And, and as, as you said, that things are beginning to slip a little bit there. So, what's the narrative in terms of Manchester City right now? Well, this is it. Firstly, Pep Guardiola has been seriously talking about what they need to get right. He said. We used to bounce back last season. You know, we lose a game, we have a setback, we bounce straight back. We need to get back to doing that rather than having a poor run. The key to it, though, look at this, no clean sheets in eight games now for a defence which at the start of the season looked so, so solid. Problems have begun to creep in there as well. And that's in marked contrast, as Darren said, to what we're seeing from Liverpool. As far as City are concerned, if we look at their fixtures, and again, I'm going to pull out the ones against the, the big six, top six sides here. They have it a lot easier in terms of all of those assignments are at home apart from Manchester United and the next Manchester derby on the 16th of March. But of course they don't have the luxury of being front runners right now. And Darren, the other thing I would say with City as they prepare to take on Leicester for instance is that as we discovered against Crystal Palace, you can no longer say, Darren, that you absolutely 100% say City will win this game. You don't have that assurance at the moment, do you? Absolutely, John. Had the third defeat in 48 Premier League games at the X Men. Leicester will have their hands up after beating Chelsea last weekend. Mardi in good goal scoring form and the side responding to adversity yet again. Also, talk about Cook, well, possibly be, uh, losing his job as he is under pressure after a poor run of form. So, City have been able to do more drop points today. And you would have to say they have a mountain to climb against the Liverpool side who just will not be denied. Yeah, and I think the problem as well, Darren, would be that th this is a, a City side that maybe could wobble in a, the face of adversity because they haven't. Many of them haven't tasted any adversity in recent times, have they? No, they haven't. And you know, in a way, you look at my industry. A lot of us have been getting carried away with City. Mm. They have been absolutely superb to watch, very, very easy on the eye. But the problem is that. It's all about getting points on the board. I've said before on your show, you don't get extra points for artistic impression. And I think as far as Liverpool are concerned, they are just focused on winning. It doesn't really matter how you do it, just doing it. And I think now we're going to see what City are made of. We know they've got the depth of the squad, but do they have the character? They haven't yet been tested in this manner mm. before. Now let's see what they're made of. Well, let's also find out a bit more about Spurs, shall we? I think we know they're made of wonderful stuff because they just keep surprising us. 
Here's another thing, only half jokingly, maybe this talk about a title tilt from them will be a welcome distraction from all that speculation about the manager's future, Manchester United, Real Madrid, or whatever it may be. I know one thing for sure, Pochettino's not shirking talking about the title race. Um, he's called on them to keep focus amid the title talk. So on the one hand, he's saying, yeah, come on, let's stay focused on what we're doing here. But he's not denying it. He, he's not saying we can't talk about it. He spoke very candidly about what we need to do next. We've got ourselves in a great position and he's, he's bigging up his team as it were, saying, you know, we've done really well but the hardest thing is going to be taking it to the next level, which is winning something and you'd all have to agree with that. I mean, look at the fixtures, for instance. They're in a great position right now, but if you look at their clashes against their big rivals, they've got the hardest by far, just because they take on teams away from home. Chelsea, Liverpool and City. But then again, playing Liverpool and City, those are the cliched six-pointers, Darren, aren't they? Th those are the swing games. A and if, if Spurs somehow keep in contention, if they keep in touch, well, they could massively impact the title race. I think they could. And I don't look at those pictures now and think that they are a bridge too far as far as Spurs are concerned because the biggest thing that Pochettino has done for Tottenham Hotspur. It has changed their mentality. They used to have stand kicked in their faces by Arsenal. Now they've finished above them in two of the last three seasons and are on course to do so again this season. You look at the way they've struggled at Chelsea in the last 28 years. Last season they made a match to pop their first win there. They went to Manchester United earlier this season and pulled off another win, a place where they don't normally go and get the three points. That's what Pochettino has done for Tottenham Hotspur and that's the reason why those pictures will not frighten that side. They went to Real Madrid, they went to Barcelona, gave both those giants a game as well. I think Spurs are very much in this title race. I think as far as Pochettino is concerned, he will be worrying the life out of Liverpool and City. Right, however, as I said, I did ask Darren, as I asked myself, to predict right now, as we stand here right now, the top three, in fact the top six. And if we take a little look at our predictions, well, we both went with Liverpool right now, ahead of City with Spurs in third place. And the others will discuss in the next part of the show when we talk about the race for Champions League football. No, I've already showed a few comments from you guys uh, in terms of that top six prediction, but what about the here and the now? Well, as far as the race is concerned, Jerome Salazar has written in saying City have conceded eight goals in five league games, nine out of the last ten in all competitions. You say it's unheard of last season. I'm not sure about that. I'll take issue with that. I think they, they did let goals in last season. It's just that set against Liverpool standards this season, that simply isn't good enough. You also say that you think you could see Spurs having a sniff at second place tonight. Let's see what uh, Victor has to say, as um, Victor is saying, if that win, 6-2 over Everton, is an indication of things to come, uh, then they may give Liverpool and Man City a run for their money if they can add a player or two, um, although the absence of Son for a couple of games in the Asian Cup could be a problem. You think United may miss out on the top four, Chelsea and Arsenal you still think are better than them. Well, the reality is that we don't really know, it's just that we're halfway through the season and we've got more of an idea than we did have. Uh, talking of which, we'll get into some predictions for the European places next.
Welcome back. It's Boxing Day, the midway point of the Premier League season. We've spoken about the title race already with Darren Lewis, and I'd like to talk about what well, I'm calling the European equations right now. Yes, of course, these two London club managers have been in the frame for Champions League football and European football all season long. But what about Solskjaer and Manchester United? Things are changing at the top of that table, and if we take a look at this now, that's fourth, fifth, and sixth as it stands. Just have a little glance at the form table where Chelsea's little slip in terms of recent form has maybe changed the equation, particularly for Manchester United, who might feel that they're able to get on the up right now. So what's happening with Chelsea? Well, Maurizio Sarri, who I've got a lot of time for, he's a plain speaking fella, has been saying he's a bit worried about Chelsea right now. The nature of the defeat against uh, Leicester, a couple of performances re recently have seen him read the riot act, according to the Express. What's more truthful is that he'll have been speaking to his key players there. And the Guardian mentions this uh, worry about Chelsea's mental fragility. Uh, also a little bit talk about maybe being reunited with a former uh, Napoli player there, the, the great European striker Gonzalo Higuain. Let's get to Darren Lewis about this one here. Darren, as far as that bit about mental fragility is concerned, would that worry you? We've seen this from Chelsea before in recent seasons. It wouldn't worry me long term. I think you can solve it uh, in the longer term. But in the short term, in terms of tight ambitions, I think they're over. And that's the reason why they've slipped so often in the last few weeks. Three defeats in the last six Premier League games. Sarri will correct it. I think he'll go for what he knows. That's why he's interested in Gonzalo Higuain. I do think he's making a huge mistake consistent with Jorginho in the defensive midfield position because Kanti has proven himself there and he is coveted by every club, every top club in world football in that position. He also doesn't have enough goals and that's a big problem for him. And that's the reason why he's playing uh, Eden Hazard in the centre forward position. Yeah, and maybe just not able to play the likes of Giroud there. Let's talk about Arsenal. No problems up front for them. Oh, no, sir. No problems whatsoever. Um, Obama Young doing wonderful things. Lacazette, of course, doing what he needs to do. But my concern with Arsenal would be an over-reliance on Lucas Torreira, the best by far of their non-attacking players. And that's why Unai Emery has come out and said, I'm going to play him. I'm not going to rest him, even though he's in yellow card trouble uh, for the game in the early hours of tomorrow uh, against Brighton. So this is the only thing for me that can concerns um, what they might want to achieve, Darren. I'll come to you back with Arsenal straight away here. It is, I just feel that the squad needs bolstering in January if they're going to mount a realistic challenge. They can score all the goals they want, but they look thin elsewhere. Do you agree? I do indeed. The goals scored by Burnley highlights the problem they've got at the back. They are all over the place in the defensive position. So I think uh, Ben Leno is it's an upgrade on Petr Cech, but they may even have to look at maybe getting a second choice goalkeeper as well, who is of a higher class, because I think that maybe the end is not as far as Cech is concerned. Torreira, you're right to point out the fact that he is in the red zone in his first season in English football, and he does need a rest, particularly during this period. The period where the games come thick and fast. That's the reason why I would suggest Arsenal might not be uh, in with a shout for the top positions. I think they are, well, all three of the clubs you're talking about now, they're Europa League clubs because they're inconsistent. They don't have the ability to string the wings together against the top clubs uh, going into the most crucial stage of the season. That's why I think the top three will finish the top three and the others any order you like. <laughs> any order you like. And what's lovely about that is the factor that makes that statement possible is the potential resurgence of Manchester United. They've got all the players, they've got all the history. Will they be the team that comes flying through in the second half of this season? Well, let's have a little look, shall we, at the narrative surrounding them in terms of the newspapers. I, I don't think it's as simple as this. All this lovely stuff about, oh, the good old days are going to come rolling back. I don't think it's as simplistic as that, but we're still reading that one right now. What I find interesting is that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has been incentivized to the tune of a couple of million pounds if you can get United into the top four in Champions League football. Now, that is something you don't want to forget about here. Uh, otherwise, a headline from the Manchester Evening News that caught my eye. A uh, little interest in uh, Romelu Lukaku, who's been on compassionate leave, but, but talk possibly about him moving on. Quite frankly, that wouldn't concern me too much, though, Darren, because as far as United are concerned, I love what I see from Rashford. Uh, I like what I'm seeing from Martial right now. It's not as if they're short of options. Now, where do you see Solskjaer taking them? Um, I actually do see United getting back into the top four. I could see that happen, and I'll tell you why. I think the biggest problem, the problem started when David Moyes got rid of so many of the servants, the backroom servants that had served the club well under Samantha Burton. One of Solskjaer's first moves has been to bring back McFeelan, 
And I think that when you get the old mentality into a club like Manchester United, you can get players responding to it. I think they will now put together a run. They've got some very winnable games coming up, and that will get the confidence back. I also, uh, I'm in the minority, I accept as far as Lukaku is concerned, but I think we've not seen the best of him because he's been so isolated in so many games. He's had to work within a defensive tactical setup. And now that Solskjaer is intent to take a handbrake off, we all know about that stat five goals for the first time since Sir Alex Ferguson retired in 2013. I think we might see a different Lokaku. And I think he may now start to get the credit he deserves. Darren, I'll come back to you in just a moment because I want to talk relegation with you a little bit later. Um, I know that you're going to be focusing on that Fulham game uh, on Boxing Day today. I'll just myself go through um, the best of the rest, as it were. I think just a few headlines relating to some clubs that could, of course, still be very much part of the mix here. Um, if you look at De La Fer and, 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 and Watford, for example, Chelsea go back to Vicarage Road today and they'll know full well that it was a 4-1 thrashing back in February and he reminded them of that. He said, OK, you know, things might have changed by now, but we have to be aware that on their day, Watford are a side that are capable of doing things like that. Bournemouth too, um, you know, David Brooks was the star. Bournemouth are a team that go on hot streaks. They can win three, maybe four in a row. Yeah, okay, they can also have bad streaks as well, but they are a team that could do something spectacular. I did feel a few weeks back that maybe Everton would be bracketed in, in, in that category of a team that you fancy something from, maybe even a little push towards those European places. But as we saw what happened against Spurs when they were absolutely destroyed, uh, the whole narrative now is don't pick on Pickford too much, but he did have a horrific outing there, the England number one. He could have got himself into a bit of trouble as well with the challenge on teammate uh, Delhi Ali, England teammate that is, nightmare before Christmas for them. Wolves also, um, Wolves have got themselves a lot of admirers this season and you feel that maybe they're a team that could do something special, but uh, Conor Cody has said we're not planning anything like that. All talk of Europe is banned right now. We're going to ban talk right now because we have to go to a break. As promised, I want to come back. A bit of chat about relegation with Darren. Welcome back. Time to talk relegation right now. And uh, indefensible is my title here because I'm worried about one or two defences at the bottom of that table. Let's have a glance at who's where, who's in trouble as we come into a 19th round of matches of this Premier League season. 18 played, it's Fulham bottom there. Huddersfield and Burnley clearly in trouble there. But you'd say really perhaps anybody here who's around that slightly under a point a game mark, they're the ones that you'd worry about the most. Form table tells us the Huddersfield have had a wretched run lately, just as bad as Burnley. And of course, Fulham have struggled all season long. So let's have a little look at a couple of key indicators. Defending, who's doing it worst? Well, 
the Fulham team is the worst by far because they are conceding goals like you wouldn't believe. Four more than anybody else, 42 already this season, followed by Cardiff, Burnley, Southampton, Huddersfield and rather strangely Manchester United. Shots conceded, i.e. which teams are allowing teams to get at them. Well, Burnley have done this all season long. They are not shielding their defence and Joe Hart at all. Uh, Brighton, Fulham, Newcastle, Bournemouth and Cardiff in there in terms of being guilty. So I say to you this, which of the three clubs that feature on both of those tables, well that would be Fulham, Burnley and Cardiff and that would be of concern because that strikes me as being three clubs who will struggle. A quick couple of headlines for you uh, in terms of uh, games coming up on Boxing Day here. Uh, as far as this one is concerned, uh, Fulham, well they've been looking ahead to what they've got coming along and, and, and they know as they take on a wolf side that can blow hot and cold, they have to be super careful not to slip into the new year. Otherwise, um, Sean Dyche has been talking really about what he needs to do uh, to try and turn things around here. Keen, of course, now with Everton, who they take on a little bit later on today. And uh, he's looking for any kind of guidance defensively, Sean Dyche, because something that was so good has become so bad. Right, Darren Lewis is uh, the man who's standing by. Darren, um, uh, you're covering the Fulham game today. Is it all doom and gloom? Uh, you know, there's not been a bounce for Ranieri. Uh, is there a way out of this? Um, well, the way out of it could be in the transfer market because my understanding, I worked on the story ahead of the dismissal of his predecessor, Ikanovic, and my understanding is they're going to give him another huge amount of money to spend in the January transfer window. I think they'll be targeting, unsurprisingly, defenders and another attacker as well because they don't feel they score enough goals and they are, as you just pointed out, terrible at the back. However, they're up against the wall side that have beaten um, well, they're taking points of all the top sides, haven't they? Except for Liverpool, who uh, they uh, fell victim to last Friday night. And so I think as far as Wolves are concerned, they've had too much for Fulham. You know, I, I was looking at that graphic a second ago, John. I think Cardiff will stay up. And the one thing we've learned about promoting clubs, we always think that the club with the weakest squad are doomed. And time and again, they proved us right and did last time around, but they have more in terms of character and quality. And I think Cardiff will stay up, but they do worry for them. All right, Darren, thank you so much for that. So let's see how they go today. Uh, enjoy your football, and we'll catch you soon. Thank you, John. And it'll be time for us now to uh, get a couple of bits of feedback away before we leave you. Uh, of course, uh, we were talking about who's going to win what. Uh, uh, Fern goes with Liverpool first. Another Liverpool. Man City, Spurs, Chelsea, Arsenal, uh, United. Just time for one more quick one. Uh, Imran's been in touch with us as ever. Thank you very much, Imran. Uh, and your comment here. Liverpool, City, Spurs, Chelsea, Arsenal, Man United in the top six. All right. Well, there's action on its way. Enjoy the games tonight. I'll be back on Friday as we look back at those. Thanks for watching. Bye.